हेलो एवरीवन टुडेस टॉपिक इज इमरजेंसी बॉडी कंप्यूटर टोमोग्राफी और इमरजेंसी बॉडी सीटी रोल ऑफ द सीटी एप्टमन इन इमरजेंसी द स्पीड एंड रिलेटिव लो कॉस्ट ऑफ द सीटी हैव मेड इट प्राइमरी मॉडलिटी यूज्ड फॉर द रैपिड इवैल्यूएशन ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंट ट्रॉमा और इन्फ्लेमेटरी प्रोसेस ऑफ द एब्डोमेन एंड पेल्विस सीटी आल्सो इज ऑफन यूज्ड टू सर्वे द एब्डोमेन एंड पेल्विस इन केसेस where the clinical history and exam are limited or non specific but pathology is suspected general principles of ct abdominal ct the oral contrast agents containing barium or iodine are used to opacify the gi tract or gastrointestinal tract this allows the radiologist to better evaluate the gi tract for pathology and to distinguish bowel from other structures the intravenous contrast agents are used to opacify blood vessels to enhance the solid abdominal organs and to improve image contrast between the lesions and normal structures contrast agents tri iodinated benzene ring there are two classes like ionic and non ionic ionic has high osmolality example sodium and megalumine salts of diatrizoic acid and the proper name is urographin and adverse uh, reactions are common in this group non ionic their osmolality is very low example hydrohexol it is given in the name of omnipack which has very less adverse reaction there is adverse reaction of the above discussed contrast agents first if patient develops urticaria discontinue injection if not completed and no treatment is needed in most of the cases give h1 receptor blocker like diphenhydramine benadryl given in uh, given oral im or iv in 25 to 50 mg or hydroxyzine vistaril given in im or iv in 25 to 50 mg and sometimes h2 receptor blocker may also be added if severe or widely disseminated epinephrine is given subcutaneously in the ratio of 1 is to 1000 0.1 to 0.3 ml that accounts for 0.1 to 0.3 mg it is given if there is there is no cardiac contraindication so epinephrine is not given to those patients who has cardiac diseases b if patient develop facial or laryngeal edema give alpha agonist epinephrine subcutaneously in the ratio 1 is to 1000 point 1 to point 3 ml that is point 1 to point 3 mg or if hypotension is evident epinephrine is given 1 is to 10000 give slowly intravenously 1 ml that is point 1 mg repeat as necessary up to a maximum of 1 mg second give oxygen 6 to 10 liter per minute via mask if not responsive to therapy the obvious acute laryngeal edema seek appropriate assistance see if patient develop bronchospasm give oxygen 6 to 10 liter per minute via mask and monitor electrocardiogram O2 saturation levels and blood pressure, and sometimes give beta agonist inhalers like metoprotenol, alpument, albuterol, proventil. Epinephrine is given subcutaneously one is to thousand, that is point one to point three ml, that is point one to point three milligram. If hypotension is present, give epinephrine one is to ten thousand slowly intravenously. In one ml, like or point one milligram. Repeat as needed up to a maximum of one milligram. If patient develops hypertension with tachycardia, elevate the patient legs or keep the patient in trundle and birth position. Monitor the EKG, pulse, uh, pulse oximetry, and blood pressure. 
supply the oxygen supplement the oxygen of at uh, 6 to 10 liter per minute via mask rapid administration of the large volumes of isotonic ringel lactate or normal saline if poorly responsive epinephrine of 1 is to 10000 slowly iv 1 ml as 0.1 mg repeat as needed up to a maximum of 1 mg if still poorly responsive transfer to the intensive care unit for further management hypotension with bradycardia elevate the patient legs or keep the patient in trendelenburg position monitor patient vital signs supplement the oxygen at the rate of 6 to 10 liter per minute via mask fluid re uh, replacement with ringel lactate or normal saline atropine 0 0.6 to 1 mg iv slowly may repeat up to a maximum of 2 to 3 mg in the adult f seizure consider diazepam of valium 5.0 mg intravenous or midazolam 2.5 mg intravenously supplement oxygen at the rate of 6 to 10 liter per minute via mask if longer effect needed, obtain a consultation and consider phenytoin or dilantin infusion 15 to 18 mg per kg at 15 mg per minute. Monitor vital signs. Normal CD abdomen. Here the axial, uh, axial section of the CT at the level of the lungs and the liver. And here we can see only the right lobe of the liver is seen here. And here, there are, we can see the left lobe of the liver and hepatic veins can also be seen. And this is a contrast enhanced CT. And this is the axial section of the CT at the level of pancreas, spleen, at the level of pancreas and the spleen. And we can see the left side, the small left kidney has been appeared. And this is also the, and slowly the right kidney is appearing. And this is the level of the, this is the axial section of the CT at the level of the kidneys. You can see the renal arteries, both the renal arteries can be seen in this section. And you can see the multiple bowel loops in this section of the image. And this is the level at the level of the bladder. Hepatic anatomy segments. The liver is composed of right and left lobes separated anatomically by the vertical plane through the inferior vena cava, gallbladder fossa, and middle hepatic vein, and the total of eight segments, which are divided by the main hepatic veins and portal veins inferiorly. In each segment has its own vascular supply and biliary drainage. The segments are numbered clockwise when viewed ventrally. And this is a line diagram showing the various segments in the liver. And they are they are counted, they are they are placed in the clockwise manner. And we can see the inferior vena cava, right hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein, and left hepatic vein. And each segment has their own blood supply. So left hepatic vein will supply the segments of two, three, four. And middle hepatic segment will supply the segments of one and nine. One is chordate loop. And right hepatic, right hepatic vein supplies the right lobe of the liver. And it supplies the seven, six, five, and eight segments. And we can see the biliary tree. You see the common bile duct, common hepatic artery, portal vein. And these three, they form the porta hepatis. And we can see the falciform ligament also in this section.
coronary liver segments. There are total eight segments, which are divided into first caudate, which is hidden, second left lateral, third left lateral, fourth left medial, fifth right anterior, sixth right posterior, seventh right posterior, and eighth right anterior. And this is the axial section of the CT at the level of the liver, showing the segments two, four, eight, and seven segments. And this is showing the superior surface of the liver, hepatic veins, left, middle, and right, and inferior penacava as a landmark. And we can see the first segment is also here. And this is the axial section of the CT at the level of the both kidneys showing the segments three, four, five, and six. And this is the in level of the inferior liver showing the hepatic veins, falciform ligaments are as landmarks. General conditions like and general emergencies in the uh, in the emer in emergency CT abdomen. This section of the CT is showing the hemoperitoneum, as evidenced by the the air or the hypoattenuating or hypo dense or pitch black in the superior surface of the or so peripheral or periphery of the left lobe of the liver. Diagnosis is hemoperitoneum. In this section, this is the mediastinal window showing the extra luminal air. And this section of the CT abdomen showing the diaphragmatic rupture as evidenced by the herniation of stomach and the spleen. You see the huge, huge stomach is herniating into the spleen here in this section. In this section of the, this section of the CT showing the fractured rib, which is leading, into, leading to the surgical emphysema. Splenic trauma. The splenic trauma is account for the 25% of all abdominal traumas. And it is the most common organ to get injured in the trauma, traumatic event. Here, the contrast enhanced CT is highly specific. The appearances of splenic trauma are laceration, intrasplenic hematoma, subcapsular hematoma, splenic infarction, and hemoperitoneum. There are four classes of splenic trauma. Class one, the criteria is capsular disruption, subcapsular hematoma. Class two, peripheral laceration, hematoma less than three centimeter. Class three, fracture extending to the hilum, hematoma more than three centimeter. Class four, shattered spleen and vascular disruption. And this is a, um, this is an annotated image of the uh, image showing the splaining, uh, various uh, images of the spleen showing the trauma, show, showing the criteria for splenic trauma. First one is showing the capsular disruption and subcapsular hematoma. The second image is showing the less than three centimeter hematoma with peripheral laceration. Third, fracture extending into the ILM and hematoma more than three centimeter. Fourth, there will be the uh, vascular disruption and the shattered spleen. And this is the axial section of the CT showing the grade three splenic laceration with active bleeding as evidenced by the hyperechoic rim in the peripheral of the spleen which shows the acute bleeding. 
and this is the axial section of the CT showing the great force planing laceration. As evidenced by this normal splenic contour is lost and it is more hypoechoic and it is uh, more hypoechoic. That is, as evidenced by the necrosis. This is a grade three splaining laceration with the perihepatic collection. You can see the hypoechoic rim, which is hypoechoic rim in the peripheral of the liver. Suggestive of the peri peripatic collection. Liver trauma. It is the second most common after the splenic trauma, accounts for the 10% of the cases. And right and most common lobe affected in liver trauma is the right lobe than the left lobe. And in right lobe, the posterior segment involvement is most common than the anterior segment. Appearances on CT are laceration, intrahepatic hematoma, subcapsular hematoma, and in fact, there are six classes uh, in the liver trauma. First, the criteria is capsular tear, less than one centimeter parent camel depth. Second class, accounting for the parent camel tear, one to three centimeter parent camel depth. Third class, parent camel disruption, more than three centimeter parent camel depth, but less than 25% of the hepatic lobe. Class four, parent canal disruption, 25 to 50% of the hepatic lobe. Class five, parent canal disruption, more than 50% of the hepatic lobe. Class six, hepatic avulsion. This is the axial section of the CT showing the grade three liver injury. You see the hypoechoic region noted in the right lobe of the liver. And it is not extending into the left lobe. and parenchymal disruption of more than three centimeter, but it is involving only less than 35% of the hepatic lobe. And this axial section of the CT showing the perihepatic collection as evidenced by the hypoechoic around the periphery of the liver, suggestive of perihepatic collection. And this is a grade four liver injury. It is in the right lobe. And this is a grade five liver injury. It is suggestive of the active bleeding as evidenced by the hyperechoic rim in the right lobe of the liver. These are the both, uh, both the images of the different patients, CT images of the different patients. First image showing a small area of low density seen in the lateral portion of the right lobe and the blood surrounds the liver. And in second image, the another CT image, axial CT image of the another patient shows a much larger area of laceration in the posterior aspect of the right lobe. A central area of increased density, white indicates the acute hemorrhage. Pancreatic trauma. Pancreatic trauma accounts for 3 to 10% of the cases, which leading to the high mortality rate of 25%. So the accurate diagnosis is vital in these pancreatic trauma cases. The appearances of pancreatic trauma are often subtle and they may be normal if the patient present within the 12 hours, then we should rescan and injury, we should look out for the injury to the main pancreatic duct, which is the chief factor. Findings, the linear hypodensity around the pancreas, diffuse thickening of gerota spatia, retroperitoneal fluid collection, anterior to the splenic vein. This axial section of the CT showing the pancreatic calcification and pancreatic laceration. 
which is evident by the, in the body of the pancreas. If this is the hypoglycemic in the liver, is the gallbladder. In this axial section of the CT, showing the large hypodense lesion in the tail of the pancreas, tail and body of the pancreas, suggestive of the pseudocyst. Renal trauma, seen in 15 to 40% of the cases. The CT is useful in diagnosing and staging renal injuries, determining the depth of cortical lacerations, the quantity of devascularized renal tissue, the status of renal collecting system, the extent of perirenal hemorrhage. There are four classes of classes of the renal trauma, like splenic trauma. First class, contusions, small corticomedullary laceration that do not communicate with the collecting system. Second, laceration that communicates with the collecting, collecting system. Three, shattered kidney injury to the vascular pedicle. Four, UPJ avulsion, laceration of the renal pelvis. This is the axial section of the CT at the level of the kidneys showing the grade two renal injury in the right side. And we can see, we can, uh, we can also see the contrast, the extravasation of the contrast. And this is the axial section of the CT showing the right adrenal hemorrhage. And this is the axial section of the CT at the level of the both kidneys showing grade two injury of the left, uh, left kidney, which is extending into the vascular pedicle. And this is a axial section of the CT showing the right perinephric hematoma in the upper pole of the right kidney. And it's here is, uh, to see the collection, also perinephric collection. You can see the mass, we can see in this image, the axial section of the CT showing the left kidney rupture. You cannot visualize the kidney. Normal contour of the left kidney is lost. And this is a coronal reformation, reconstruction, showing the splenic and left kidney injury. Bowel trauma accounts for less than 5% of the cases. Appearances, focal intramural hematoma, complete transaction, hemoperitoneum. Here the duodenum, duodenum is the most commonly involved bowel it, that is D2, D3 segments are involved and colon damage, colon trauma is less common. And these are difficult to diagnose. Misdiagnosis that is catastrophic fatal peritonitis, mortality is very high. Early diagnosis is vital. CT signs of the bowel trauma, extra luminal air, extravasation of oral contrast, thickened or discontinuous bowel wall, a high attenuation clot, that is sentinel clot, adjacent to the involved bowel, a streaky soft tissue infiltration by the fluid. Anyway, this is the axial section of the CT showing the duodenal perforation as evidenced by the extravasation of the contrast given by the red arrow. And we can see the rim of the air collection around the liver showing the extra luminal air. And this is the CT showing the retroperitoneal air and diagnosis is duodenal perforation. And this is CT showing the extravasation of the oral contrast. 
And this is the axial section of the CT showing the mesenteric laceration with hemoperitoneum. Let's see the hypoechoism here. In the dual in the, the mesentery. And this is the axial contrast showing the multiple dilated bowel loops. Suggestive of the small bowel paralytic ileus. And this is a CT axial section of the abdominal CT showing the ischemic bowel due to the trauma. And it sometimes it is also called shock bowel. And this is the axial section of the CT at the liver level, showing the bowel perforation with extra fixation of the oral contrast. Note the contrast spillage in the periphery of the liver. And this is axial contrast CT abdomen showing the retroperitoneal air from the duodenal perforation around the, around the left kidney, we can see it, given by the red arrows. And rest abdominal organs are normal. Bladder trauma. It is associated with the blunt pelvic trauma. Symptoms are gross hematuria. Distended bladder if the patient is more prone. Urine extravasation may be intraperitoneal or extraperitoneal. Delayed scan or cystogram will show the rupture. Here the red arrow is showing the bladder rupture with peritoneal extravasation. You can see the extravasation, you can see the hyperechoic line in the peritoneum. And this is the axial section of the CAD showing the extravasation of contrast into the intra or intra and extra peritoneal cavity. And there is a fracture of estabulum. This is the axial section of the CAD showing the intra peritoneal bladder rupture. And this is a CT cystogram showing the bladder interstitial injury. You can see the loss of contour of the normal bladder wall. And we can see the fracture of the acetabulum also in the right side, given by the two arrowheads. And this is extra CT, uh, CT showing the extra peritoneal bladder rupture. Now we will discuss about some emergency conditions involving the abdominal inflammation. This is the axial section of the CT showing the there is markedly distended gallbladder and markedly enlarged, and there is a gallbladder wall thickening, and we can see the multiple gallstones in the wall of the gallbladder. And we can see the gallstone perforation with abscess formation in the gallbladder area. And this is a CT showing the air in the gallbladder, which is pitch dark. And we can see the gallbladder wall is thickened, which is uh, suggestive of emphysematous cholecystitis. And this is an emergency condition. And here the world bladder is also enlarged. And this is the axial section of the CAT abdomen showing the peripancreatic fat stranding given by the arrows with, uh, with the fluid collection and facial thickening. 
thickening. This is the axial section of the CT abdomen showing the pancreatic necrosis. You can see this, there is a diffuse enlargement of the kidney from head, body to the tail. See the hypoechoic area in the in the head, head and body. It's suggestive of pancreatic necrosis. And this is a axial uh, CT abdomen showing acute pancreatitis with dilated main pancreatic duct. And this is the axial CT abdomen showing acute pancreatitis, hemorrhage, hemorrhagic necrotic cystic mass. This is hypoechoic in the head of the pancreas. As we discussed earlier, same same CT image showing the pseudocyst. Where how we will describe is that they can see that large, well-defined hypoechoic region you know, seen in the body and tail of the pancreas, which is suggestive of pseudocyst. Acute pancreatitis, mild form, leading to interstitial edema, fluid collections, minimal necrosis, which is the histologic severe form, confluent necrosis, hemorrhage, organ failure, pseudocyst, abscess formation. Early severe acute pancreatitis, extended necrosis, organ failure, and finally lead to death. This is the image taken in the May month. You can see this little diffuse enlargement of the pancreas with hyperechoic and irregular borders. And this is the another image taken in the July month. Normal contour of the pancreas is lost. And here we can see this hypoechoic lesions or hair in the pancreas. And this is severe acute pancreatitis. Then we can see we can say that here there is an extended necrosis. We can see the large hypercalculation and it is no, the oblated appearance in the right lobe of the liver. Diagnosis is ALA. And this is the axial section of the CT showing the pyogenic abscess in the right lobe of the liver. Then the axial section of the CT showing the appendicitis as evidenced by the enlarged terminal portion, periappendicial peri -appendicial stranding. This is a normal appendix, ventral fat herniation can be seen. These are the various images. The upper row of the images are showing the appendicular and lower row shows showing the inflamed, dilated and fluid filled appendix. And this must not be confused with the appendicular. And this dilated fluid filled appendix can be seen with the hypoechoic, hypoechoic lesion in the appendix. And this is a CT colonography, this image. And this image is showing the air in the bladder cavity. And this is a showing axial CT showing the sigmoid colon thickening pseudomembranous colitis.
and this is a ct showing the sigma diverticulum with diverticulitis and this is a ct showing the right left left renal calculus and this calculus is noted in the upper pole of the right kidney and the right kidney is slightly enlarged and this is axial ct showing the right distal ureteric calculus and this is the axial section of the ct showing the right vesico ureteric junction stone see the hypoechoic in the hyperechoic small hyperechoic 2 to 4 mm in the right vuj suggestive of right vuj calculus or vesico ureteric junction calculus This is a CT urography of the patient showing the left ureteric calculus in the upper ureter, and this is a CT urography of another patient showing the two calculus noted in the uh, in the mid ureter, and we can see the subtle uh, hyperechoic lesion in the. Uh, no, that's not it. See it. It is a case of UTI. We can see here that there is a dilated uh, distal ureter, mid ureter, and proximal ureter with the dilatation of the pelvic calcial system, marked dilatation of pelvic calcial system, kidneys enlarged, and and this is suggestive of grade five vesico ureteric reflux. these three images are showing the mesenteric ischemia first image is uh, there is a bowel wall thickening indicating edema or hemorrhage and second there is a lack of enhancement in the wall indicated infarction third image showing the pneumatosis portal vein gas and pneumoperitoneum fourth intraluminal thrombus in involved vessel this is the axial section of the cd Showing the colitis, the thickening pericolonic stranding, and this axial section of the CT showing the intussusception. There are various signs. You can see the mesenteric fat, and we can see the lumen with contrast and thickened wall intussusception. These three findings will give the target sign, which is the. pathognomic of the intussusception thank you